This is E11, day one, and we're introducing you to the OW that makes the long O sound. So we've got O, N, own, B, O, Bo, M, O, Mo, T, O, To, U, O, Lo, S, O, So, R, O, Ro, Sh, O, Show, S, L, O, Slow, O. So if you get a highlighter, you can colour in the O, W in each of those words. It's making the O sound, the long O sound. So OW can be at the start of a word, it can be at the end of a word, like that, and at the start of the word again. So the only reason we have an E on the end of O here is because OW on its own is a phonogram. So to change it into a word, they put on an E on the end because most words have three or more letters. Now let's have a look at what all of the, each of these words mean. So if you have a lot of money, you might own a house or a car or things. So they're the things that you've paid for and they belong to you. A bow, you can tie a bow in a ribbon or in your shoelace. It's like a knot that you tie and you have, um, you, and quite often you see a nice bow in someone's hair or on a gift or something to decorate it. Mow is where you mow the lawn with a lawn mower. This is tow, so sometimes you might see a pickup truck tow a car, or you might see a car towing a trailer or a caravan or a van. Low, if the water level is low or something's close to the ground, we say it's low. So if you're sowing a seed in your garden, you'd put you'd say so like this. If you're sowing with a needle and a thread though, you'd say so like that. So that's a needle and then you'd have a thread through it. So to sow a material would be this sow. This is sowing a seed into the ground. Row, you could have people in a boat that are using oars to row with. And if you go on a bus or if you look in some classrooms, they'll have the desks in rows or they'll have the seats in rows in a bus or in a church or at a hall or somewhere. So rows mean nicely spaced out, one after the other. A show could be um, a show that you go to in a hall, or it might be a show you watch on TV, um, or it might be where you have some performers um, singing or dancing and you watch them. You could also show a friend some of your toys or your book or something, which means that they can see what it is. Slow, a snail is very slow moving. The opposite to slow would be fast. Okay, and O, if you owe the bank money or you owe someone money or you owe someone a favour, or you owe someone a lolly, lolly, it means you've got to give something back to them. All right, let's read the words now, sound them, spell them, and cover and write them. So we've got own, 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 own. So cover it and try and write it three times without looking. And see if you can get your letters on the line. Okay, you can finish off the rest of that page. Don't do these extra words, just do the black words into your book. Off you go. E11 day two, we're revising the long O sound and we're using the letters OW. You've already learnt that we can use OA for the long O sound and that's mainly used in the middle of words and sometimes at the start of a word. This o, OW for the O sound, you'll find, is usually at the end of a word and sometimes, not very often, at the start of a word. So those will be two important ones for you to remember. Own and O, that it's O-W, not O-A at the start. Let's read these words. O-N, own, 
the o bo m o mo t o to u o lo s o so r o ro sh o show s u o slow o and the only reason we have an e on the end is to change that from a phonogram o w representing the long o sound to a word because most English words have three or more letters so that's how they made it into a word by adding that e onto the end. Now some of these words can have more than one meaning so toe we could we have another way of writing the word toe too it's t-o-e this is the o on the end of your foot this is toe for if you, your car might pull a caravan or a trailer or something like that um, there's another one, so this is where you sow a seed into the ground and there's another way of writing the word sow but this sow means where you sow with a needle and thread or with a sewing machine. Row, it can be spelt that way to mean two different words. So you can row a boat or if you're going on a bus you'll notice that the seats are all in a row. Show could be an actual show that you go to watch and you could, it could be a verb too, where you show your friend something. So some of these words can have more than one meaning, so you'll have to be careful doing this page. All you have to do here is finish off the words, so you're just going to put the OW in each of those um, words and then link it to the picture. Five, four of those words will have um, a picture with them. Down here you have to fill in the gaps with the missing list words. So I tied a uh, something in my shoelace. I tied a bow in my shoelace. We've given you the number of letters in each word so that might help you choose the correct word from the top. Now let's go back and do that read it, sound it, spell it, write it. So we're going to go O, N, O, W, N, cover it and write it. You can do the rest of that all on your own. Off you go. E11, day three, we're revising that we can use OW for the long O sound in these words. We've already learnt that OA also makes the long O sound, but we usually use OA in the middle of, of words and it's at the start of only a couple of words. O-W is usually on the end of a word. So let's have a look. There's two words here where we have O-W at the start of a word. Not very common. Most of the time, as we said, it's on the end of a word. It's the long O sound that we use at the end of a word. Let's see if we can read these words now. O, N, own, B, O, Bo, M, O, Mo, T, O, To, U, O, Lo, S, O, So, R O Ro Sh O Show S O O Slow O, and the only reason we have this E on the end is to change that from a phonogram into a word because most English words have three or more letters. Okay, down here it says fill in the sentence with the missing verb in the correct tense. It seems that we are always now we've put the words underneath here for you to choose the correct one. It seems that we are always mowing the lawn and you can highlight the word before you write it in to that space. We've put the right number of little lines there in case you get a little bit stuck. Just to make it easier for you. My mum owes, owing owed me two dollars for doing jobs. You can read the rest of those and do them. They're quite easy because the words are all there for you. Now plurals, bow and show are nouns. So we want to make them into plurals. Here we've got them in their singular form. One bow, one show. If we want to talk about more than one of each of them, they become plural. So we've got two bows, two shows. Quite easy. All we're doing there is adding the S. Now down here we're going to change the adjectives into an adverb by adding LY. So commonly when you see LY at the end of a word, you know most of the time it's going to be an adverb. An adverb describes a verb, an adjective describes a noun. So we're going to change the word low from an adjective into an adverb simply by adding that ly. 
So we're going, my teacher thinks it is lowly when kids don't put rubbish in the bin. The snail moves slowly. So it's telling us how the snail moves. It moves slowly. This is tell, telling us how the teacher thinks. She thinks it's lowly when kids don't put rubbish in the bin. Okay, down here we've got adding er or s. These are comparators. So when you add er to the end of a word, it quite often means more of something. When we add est to the end of a word, it means the most of something. And that's called a superlative because it's a super group. It's a bigger group. A comparative comes from the word compare. It's only two things that we're comparing. So let's go. We're going to go, our starfish is... Slow, it has to be a list word. A sloth is slower, means it's more slow. And the last one is, and a snail is the slowest. It means the most slow, but we don't say most slow, we say slowest. You can finish those um, on your own. Don't forget up the top that you've got to read the word, sound the word, spell it, and cover it before you write it. Off you go. E11 day four, we're sorting some sounds and we're classifying some words in this one. So the first bit says, highlight the pictures and words to match the sound groups. Now here we've got OW making the OW sound as in cow and we're making all those words or pictures pink. Here we've got the OW making the O sound as in bow and we're making all those pictures green or words green. So let's go through the couple of our ones first. Our cow, we've got owl, and we've got n owl. You can do the rest of them. I think it's easier to just circle them if you can. Here we've got o, bow. We could have saw o, can be a word or it can be a picture. And we've got m o, mo. So you can do the rest of those on your own. Down here it says, join the pictures and words to make groups. Let's circle the things in the sky blue. So the things you might see in the sky might be a helicopter. And the thing that you might see at the beach might be some sunglasses. So you can finish the rest of those. Sort these items into the correct group. Anything that's a toy, we're going to circle them blue. So we've got some building blocks here. Anything that's a food, we're going to circle those things pink. And anything that is an animal, we're going to circle those things yellow. So sometimes it's handy as you get older to learn how to classify or group information together to if you're doing an assignment or something. So this will be a good practice for you for when you get older.